So you suck at finding entries in the market. That's why you're watching this video. And what I'm gonna be breaking down is actually how to really understand what makes a good entry in the market and how to pinpoint a better entry. Entries in the market really depend on what kind of trades that you're taking and what kind of trader you are realistically. There's a very big difference between swing trading and scalping. Right. I don't necessarily care if I'm a few dollars off in an equity position if I'm trying to swing it, even if I'm trying to swing futures. Right. If I'm off by like 10 points on the ES or about 30, 40 points on the Nasdaq, it's not the end of the world. Now, if I'm off by 10 points on a day trade or on a scalp, then I'm screwed. So it really, really matters based on the type of trade that you're actually trying to take. So the type of trade helps you identify what kind of stops and targets are used. So the deeper I dive into smaller time frame trading, the more precise I have to be. So in today's video, what I'm going to be breaking down is how to effectively find and pinpoint good entries in the market. And especially if you don't necessarily know where to enter, there's going to be generally three tiers of entry identification that I'm going to help you with. We're going to be breaking that down based on day trading right now. What I mean by day trading is taking a position throughout the day that might last even a few minutes or a few hours, but it's going to be right a longer position throughout that day. It's not going to be a scalp where I'm in it for seconds or these minute movements. So the information that I'm going to be breaking down can also help you if you're a scalper. So let's dive right into this. Let's go into the screens and see what's going on here with these markets and help you identify the three tiers of entry identification. So those three tiers, what are they? Number one, right? Identifying key levels, right? Identifying key levels as to where to enter. This is kind of more of a beginner level aspect because a key level in the market, the way that I'm looking at in the futures market is a decent bit wide, right? If I'm talking about the NASDAQ, um, I can have a key area that's about 10 points wide. Now, obviously, depending on the stops that you use and the type of trade that you're taking, that might be too much. So if I'm looking at the NASDAQ, for example, and I'm taking into account just key areas to trade, I need to be a tiny bit looser with my stops, right? So the second way that we're going to be talking about today is Delta. Delta is a factor of order flow, and it's more of an intermediate way of identifying where the actual entry comes in. And then finally, what we're going to be breaking down is the footprint. So the footprint is a huge order flow tool here that'll help us pinpoint that entry to a much higher degree, realistically, to be able to understand, okay, this is exactly where I want to enter within a two, like a few point radius on the NASDAQ. So I can do this for the S&P as well. The levels that we look at on the S&P, they might be three to four points wide. And then if I use Delta, I dive into a uh, into that entry a bit better. And then if I use the footprint, I can really solidify within like maybe a point of where I can enter into the market. So first things first, level identification. When I break down the areas that I want to trade, I have a general understanding based on these auctions in the NASDAQ where my key areas are, where my key levels are. So if you guys have watched a lot of our videos before, you know that I'm a big, big fan of the volume profile, and that's mainly how I trade. And I get all the information, well, not all, but most of the information from the volume profile. So I'm taking a look at NASDAQ, and I'm trying to pinpoint some of the entries here. What I'm trying to do is I'm going to be trying to break down some key levels to trade from based on where the balance is, the extremes of the balance. So if I look at this, I have this massive balance over here, right? And generally speaking, the tops and the bottoms of that balance, they're about a, like 10 to 20 points wide. It's a very, very wide area. So that's why this is only step number one. This is the beginner area of trying to really solidify those entries. So if I'm looking at this, I know the bottom band over here is around 960, 950 on the NASDAQ. I know the top band is around 320, 330. So I've just pinpointed an area of about 10 points. I pinpointed an area about 10 points that I could enter. That's not bad if I'm using a 20, 25 point stop on the NASDAQ. I can also pinpoint an area over here, for example, at that 260, because there's like a minor distribution within here. So 260, 250 becomes that area. So if I'm looking at this based on the trades that I've taken today, actually, you can see that, well, maybe I might need a little work on these entries because the first trade that I took on the NASDAQ here was at 260. So my stop wasn't necessarily wide enough. It was about like 18 points over here. So you can see this 18 point area from 260, right? I have this intraday balance noted here from, I guess, 256 to 245. So maybe I was a little eager on that. But if I'm looking at this general area, right, if I have a wide enough stop, I would have been fine. I could have swung this thing to the upside. So maybe my entry needs a little more work. So how can we just dive into that entry work a little more? So I can use factors that depend on order flow. And that's exactly how we can dive into this in more of a minute type scenario. So if I pinpoint the areas, right, for example, over here, I pinpointed around 325. 
325 down to about 315 we can say. So there you go, that's a 10 point area. In this case, right, when I'm entering over here around this 325, I barely take any heat, right? We don't even trade at the bottom of this area and we get a very nice move to the upside over here. So when I'm trying to identify the levels, what I wanna focus on is these balances based on the volume profile. So I'm looking at a 200 day volume profile here on the right hand side, this gray area, and I'm trying to identify where the biggest distribution blocks are. So this is one big massive distribution that splits about like 360 points. So naturally within there are going to be divots. So all these divot areas that drop off in terms of these ledges, these are going to be areas that I can pinpoint to actually trade. So within a 10 point radius. And obviously I can pinpoint areas based on the individual sessions. So if I'm looking at this here and I'm trying to break down, okay, there's another auction over here that starts about, you can say like 370 area. The 370 area, there's low volume that starts here realistically at that block. That's going to be, I can move this down a little even, right? That's going to be the area that I want to solidify so I can enter. Around that region, if I'm using about like a 20, 30 point stop, I should be fine. But if I want to be a little more precise, I got to dive into this a little more. So the second factor of it, that's more of an intermediate step, is still based on order flow to try to pinpoint those entries. And it's going to be based on the delta. So when we have large delta that comes out, you can see that there's a delta chart over here. And I can pull up another delta chart to get a better understanding of what is going on. So here's my session by session delta on the NASDAQ. And from this, I can get a better understanding of where I want to trade to kind of a higher degree of, I guess, precision, if you will. So when there's an area that creates a lot of negative delta, right, on the NASDAQ, into a low, this is like passive buying, people are getting trapped on the short side at these lows. So I wanna make sure that every time we create this delta area, prices bounce off of a specific region. So the bigger it is, the larger it is, the more effective it is, the higher probability I'm going to have good entry. Because if I take, let's say the top of this area, I can look at it, it's the 265 on NASDAQ, the bottom is the 235. So this is a 30 point area. That's not what I want to do. I'm going the opposite way of what I was doing with the levels, I'm going wider. So to pinpoint these regions on the delta, I wanna see an area on delta that gets created very, very exaggerated. So more tests, more creation, helps me and allows me to identify and pinpoint the area a bit better. So as you notice, this area over here sticks out the most. And this area is about five points wide. So about 250 down, or even a bit higher, right? About 255 down to about 245, not even, right? So this area that sticks out like a sore thumb over here, that's a massive, massive delta region that I want to be a part of. So when that gets created, we can drop down and say, okay, this is about a five point area on NASDAQ. It's not like, okay, you get a delta creation, it's this huge, huge region. You can see there's a huge delta that sticks out like a sore thumb over here, and that area is expected to hold, right? It's about like two, three points wide. So when I see the creation of this delta constantly, they come down, they add more delta, they swing up, they come down, they count, add more delta, they swing up. That's where my entry should have been because it's pinpointed right around that 250, right around that 250, like give or take about five, like five points. So if I'm looking at this, right, this is about a 10 point area, but it's right around that 250. You can see it sticks out like a sore thumb at that point. So that's where I'm going to enter. If I enter around 250, I'm taking about like maybe five to seven points of heat versus if I enter into these areas, I might be taking even 15, 20 points of heat. So when I see these regions that stick out super aggressively on the delta, they get created, right? Like over here, for example, right at 355. When 355 gets created over here, this massive region of this delta that sticks out, when we pull back into that, that's my entry that I can pinpoint, right? It's just one point, but I can expand it a little to give me a little more wiggle room to about five points. So the creation of delta and how delta sticks out like a sore thumb on NASDAQ, if I'm looking at it, generally, if I see delta of like 200 plus, in terms of positive or negative, that's something that's very, very drastic that has a huge, huge probability of holding. Now, if I wanna be even more precise, right? If I'm trying to really pinpoint the entry, whether it's on the NASDAQ or the S&P, I can use the footprint. So the footprint is going to give me that exact point of an area where people are getting trapped, where they're getting um, aggressive, right? So I can partake in a position with them. So this is going to completely transform the way that you look at entries realistically with this footprint. Diving into the footprint has always allowed me to pinpoint 
a very important area within a few points even on the NASDAQ. So let's take a look at that. So on that first trade, right, as we're seeing prices kind of shape up, we had the area around 250, we can say, right, just based on the auctions, based on the levels that we had. That was the first point where we can start pinpointing these entries. So what I'm going to be looking for is going to be large negative delta that gets trapped and reacted against it, right? So this is like passive buying, um, active trapped selling. So I'm just looking for an area that actually prices react against all of that large negative delta. So you can see over here, right at this 265, no one generally reacts against it. So I can't necessarily say this is going to be my perfect entry, right? When we come down over here, we have a huge blockade of all this negative delta. Where does that span, right? We can say right here, 246, 246 to 248, a two point area, because you get this, all this, all this aggressive selling into the lows and they push it back up. It happens twice over here. So I've pinpointed over here that this realistically should hold. So they come down, they add more aggressive size and again over here and right over here, over here they push up. So right now I have amassed more information. Now it's from 240 to 246. So it's still six points, but in this area we've had solidified selling that keeps getting jammed up and passive buying that keeps coming in. So I've just pinpointed about a five-ish point area on this NASDAQ, even less of where I could enter. So if I'm trying to get long into these areas, I know over here, right? I want to be putting limits out at that spot. I want to be buying into this area where these guys are jammed up, where they were jammed up before, right? If I'm long over here, it pushes up all the way up to about this 78, 278. So I'm, I get about 30 points off this move alone. So these guys keep getting jammed up. I have that solidified entry over here. I can enter into that with about a three, four point precision on the NASDAQ. And what do we get eventually? We get this large press to the upside and this expansion. So if I'm looking at it from the other side of things, I'm, I'm trying to identify where that big massive delta was at those highs, right? So if we get that move back into that high, whoops, I think we missed it actually. So when we get that move into that high, right, you have this area around this um, 335. But over here, this is where that huge delta gets created. When I'm looking at NASDAQ, massive cumulative delta, that's about 500, and you have about 300 that's stacked up on either side. This is something very, very impressive. So I have it around that 355 area. 355 is going to be a huge, huge area of importance for me going into the future, because if we start moving back above that, I know around 355, we can give it the benefit of the doubt of about a few points. Prices are expected to respect that area. Right? It's very similar to all this negative delta over here. So with the use of this footprint, I can pinpoint right to a very, very high degree where that area should be. So remember that 355 area from before. We come down to actually 354, one point below, and we get this massive bid to the upside. So when I'm looking at NASDAQ, I wanna understand where that delta is realistically, and from a footprint perspective, where these guys are getting super active in terms of imbalances. So if we were trying to get along that 355, based on that delta, based on the footprint that we had just seen, we're getting this very nice expansive move that trades all the way up to about 463 area. So over a hundred point move realistically on this, just based on that understanding. So if I'm looking at this footprint, one of the biggest mistakes that people make based on these entries is they, they're looking at this just from kind of a blind perspective of, okay, there's imbalances everywhere. Those are all going to be my entries, right? I just gave you three waves and three levels of finding key entries based on auctions, right? In terms of determining key levels, you don't necessarily have to use volume profiles and whatnot to determine um, key levels. But identifying key levels, identifying where delta comes in, the first step of imbalanced order flow, and then using the footprint to actually gauge where exactly those pieces of information come in. So if I'm looking at this, this thing sprays a lot of imbalance everywhere. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to start buying or selling or whatever the case may be. I can look at this and say, okay, there's a lot of aggressive selling into this high. So maybe I can pinpoint at 455 a sell, right? Okay, it works out pretty well, but do I have an area there, right? Is it just that I'm looking at this from the order flow perspective or do I have some kind of actually defined region that makes sense for me to try that trade, right? It's the same thing over here. Okay, I see a lot of selling attempting to come in here. If I short it, right, I'll probably get stopped out. It's a decent entry over here, but the question is, is it at a region? Is it at an area that I care about, right? The answer is probably no, realistically. So it's a huge factor of that. Now, these three waves, these three criteria, take you from kind of beginner to more advanced in trying to identify where those entries are in the market. So 
If you didn't know about all this before, or if you were struggling to find entries, a lot of this can open your eyes into a new way to find entries and a more precise way to find entries. So with that being said, I want to wrap this video up. I want to see if you guys have any comments down below, let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video.